last learning objective we have to do for chapter six for process costing before we get to the FIFO inventory method we're still on weighted average is to demonstrate a cost reconciliation I've labored over this to try to figure out well how can I do it in the body of the lecture uh, without making it so um, numerically oriented and there's no other way to do it other than to use uh, to use an example so rather than use an example from the from the textbook I decided to use the example you see on the screen here this is the um, um, the review problem number one at the end of the chapter and all we're gonna do is number three of this so let's read and see what we have prepare a production report for the base fab department for April the following additional information is available regarding production in the base fab department during April and we can see that we're given production data for containers of paint units in process at the beginning of April we're told what percentage is complete we're told we have 30,000 units units started 420,000 units units completed and transferred 370 which leaves 80,000 in um, partially completed units as of April 30th then we're given cost data for work in process inventory at the beginning of April only and costs added during April only we do not know the cost of the units transferred and we do not know the total cost of the work in process ending inventory that's the point of the cost reconciliation they'll give us those costs but to get to the cost reconciliation we're gonna have to go through the the, the the production schedule which has three parts the first part is the quantity schedule and equivalent units we have to do that first once we have our equivalent units we gotta figure out what our cost per equivalent unit is once we have those costs per equivalent unit then we can price those two amounts the, the, the value of the units transferred and the value of the work in process ending inventory so let's uh, let's begin with this uh, with this process and I'm gonna do away with all of the headline titles like the name of the company production report as of this date and I'm just gonna title each section but understand that for presentation purposes you're looking to be as complete as possible right I really just want to show you the process here so let's start with the very first section which is called the quantity schedule the quantity schedule and equivalent units equivalent uh, units I'm just going to shorten it to quantity schedule and equivalent U so let's do our quantity schedule that's the very first part we know it's the first part because there it is right there quantity schedule and on the quantity schedule all we want to do is account for the units that need to be accounted for so we just sort of subtitle it units to be accounted for and this is actually quite simple what are the units to be accounted for well the beginning of the process we had some work in process we had some units we call it the work in process beginning count and we're told that there were 30,000 units that were partially finished we're told what the partial uh, amount is here all materials were done 60 percent of labor and overhead were added last month that's fine and we'll use those numbers later on but right now we just want the 30,000 then we see that 420,000 units were started in production so I always just write units started is a nice easy way and we're told that there were 420,000 units so there's our believe it or not that's it that's our quantity schedule right there total units to be accounted for total units it says right here units to be accounted for 450,000 so we have to account for that somehow now we go on to the second part of this uh, um, first part which is the equivalent units so for equivalent units we have to track them uh, by the cost remember that we track that by cost so we're given cost breakdowns in terms of materials labor and overhead so we need to itemize the units left in terms of equivalent units in terms of materials in terms of labor and in terms of overhead and you'll see how easy this plays out as, as we continue on so the first thing we have we have to account for 450,000 units well how many did we make that's the very first thing so 
Let's talk about units uh, accounted for as follows. Units transferred. That's easy enough, right? Because those are done. So units transferred, how much, how many units left? And we're told 370,000. So 370,000 units have been transferred. How much of these 370,000 uh, units um, are complete in terms uh, with respect to materials? Well, all of them, right? All of them. How much of this 370 is complete with respect to labor? All of them. And with overhead? All of them. Now, it may seem redundant writing 370 across the whole line, but these lines add downwards not across so it's not really redundant when we're talking about equivalent units we're talking about equivalent units in terms of materials in terms of labor and in terms of overhead well if 370,000 units are done that means 370,000 units are done in terms of material they're done in terms of labor and 370 are done in terms of overhead then we have work in process ending count now this number here, 450, must total the total down here. So if this is 370, this must be 80. And we are told, in fact, that it is 80,000. So that is 450,000 units, which equals this number here. So we know we're okay there. We have the 80,000 units. But we have to uh, put them in terms of equivalent units for material, labor, and overhead. So let's see what we're told here. Materials are 50% complete. So if we have 80,000 units in, work, in, in uh, um, partially completed and 50% of them are complete per materials, that means 40,000 are 100% complete in terms of materials. So of this 80, because only they're only 50% done in terms of materials, that means that's 40,000 done completely in materials. The next thing we're told is that labor and overhead are 25% complete each. So we look at the 80,000, 25% of 80,000 is 20,000 are done with respect to labor and 20,000 equivalent units with respect to overhead. So how we can think about this, and if you, if you understand it so far, great, move on. You don't have to spend the next minute listening to me. You can sort of fast forward in the video. But for those who don't quite get it, understand this. What we're doing is we're breaking down every unit in terms of its three big costs. Sometimes we only have two. Sometimes we have material and conversion costs. But here we have three. And we're saying, okay, there's a partially finished unit sitting there. Does it have all the material in it now? And yes or no. So of, of the partially completed units, there's a certain percentage of materials that are done. We want to know, well, what does that mean for full units? If they're 50% done and there's 80,000, we can sort of say that there's 40,000 full units with respect to materials only. Then how much is done with respect to labor? So of a unit sitting there, how much of its labor has already been added to it? And this is all we're doing is we're figuring out uh, units. And then we'll figure out a cost per in the second part. So the first part is just the quantity schedule, which we've, which we've done, and it reconciles. And the equivalent unit schedule, we just have to add these up. So we have 410,000 units complete in terms of material. We have 390,000 units complete in terms of labor. And we have 390,000 units complete in terms of overhead. That is the first step in completing uh, a production schedule is the quantity schedule and equivalent units. Now keep in mind these equivalent units. I'm going to keep them at the top of the screen uh, in, our next, uh, in our next screen as we go to, to uh, complete section 2. So here we are at section 2. <clears throat> I brought forward the equivalent units. That's all we really need for this section here. Here we're going to figure out our cost per equivalent unit. So we have our equivalent units. Now we want to figure out our cost per equivalent unit. And I'm just going to shorten it to, to EU. And so we'll have the same, uh, the same three categories, material, overhead, and labor. They, those will continue down, but we need two more. We need our total cost uh, here. And we need what's called whole cost on this end over here. 
And of course, you could put materials, labor, and overhead here. Let's. Uh, why don't we do that just to make it look complete? Materials, labor, and overhead. So let's begin. And this is what we're doing: is we're looking at our. We're going to add up all our total costs first, and then we're going to deal with these. So much as we had units to be accounted for, we have costs to be accounted for, right? And what did we start when we started with units to be accounted for? What was the first entry? Work in process. So our cost to be accounted for is our work in process. We must have some work in process costs that must be accounted for. And if we go back to that, uh, that chart that we had, we have our cost data for work in process inventory April 1st. We're given materials, labor, overhead, and a total cost. And we're told the total cost is $150,000. We're told that our materials is 92,000. We're told that our labor is 21,000. And we're told that our overhead is 37,000. Notice we put nothing under whole cost. Whole cost will come in later on. We'll see where that uh, comes on. There's only one entry in, to in whole cost. There's only one. So that's, that's the only time you would need it. Okay, so there's our work in process, beginning 150,000 total, made up of, of, uh, of these components. Then it's costs added. Remember, their second part for the units was units added. Now it's costs added during the period. And our costs to be added during the period, uh, we're, given, we're given a total, and we're given a breakdown in materials, labor, and overhead. And looking at our costs, the costs that were added, we're told that we added $665,000 of overhead, which gives us $702,000 total. That's just for overhead. For labor, we added another $330,000 in labor. So between beginning inventory and what we added, we have $351,000. And finally, for materials we added another 851,000 so if we sum that up we'll get 943,000 total and we know that our total across here we can either add these up or just read off the chart right 1846 and that gives us 1.996 million for our total costs so let's have a look at where what we've done so far so we know where we stand in the first part of, what, of the production report, we figured out our equivalent units in terms of material, in terms of labor, and in terms of overhead. In the second part so far, we figured out our total cost in terms of material, in terms of labor, and in terms of overhead. And I don't think it takes much to see, once we put our equivalent units in, we have 943,000 in, in material costs and 410,000 in equivalent units. In material speaking, we have 390,000 equivalent units here and 390,000 equivalent units here. So, what we do to figure out our cost per equivalent unit is we're simply just doing a division. 943 divided by 410 equals $2.30 of material in each equivalent unit plus 351 divided by the 390 is 90 cents of labor in each equivalent unit plus 702 divided by 390 gives us a dollar 80 in overhead costs per equivalent unit and notice that the equivalent units are at the top we've already done they don't have to be the same all the way through because materials are a certain percentage done, labor's another percentage done, etc., right? So once we add this up, we get our whole cost, $5. That's our whole cost is $5. So the second part of what we needed to do was a cost per equivalent unit. The last thing we need to do is a cost reconciliation, and we're going to try to squeeze this into the bottom here. So let's do our cost reconciliation because we need a value for ending work in process inventory how much is it because we need this for the next period right we need this 
and also the units that were transferred, well, how much money was transferred? We know a certain number of units were transferred. We know 370,000 units were transferred, but how much were they? We know they're five bucks a piece. This is where we figure out our totals now. And our totals should come to this number here, 1,996,000, if we did it right. So cost reconciliation, um, these are costs. If this was costs to be accounted for, these are costs accounted for, accounted for as follows. Number one, units transferred, right? Units transferred. Well, how many units were transferred? 370,000 units. Our whole cost is five bucks. So if you multiply five dollars by 370,000, you'll get 1,850,000. The other way to do it is to say, okay, well, under equivalent units, keep this going under equivalent units. How many uh, equivalent units in units transferred for labor? Well, 370. And for, uh, sorry, for materials, for labor, 370. For overhead, 370. So you can multiply 370 by $2.30 and add it to 370 by 90 cents, and add it to 370 times 180, but we know that all this equals five bucks, so you could just do one multiplication, right? Where we need these columns is when it comes to work in process. So our work in process, our end count, this is where we want our ending count now. And what are we told? We're told, well, we've already figured it out, right? Uh, when we did our equivalent units, we knew it was 40,000, 20,000, and 20,000. So we have 40,000 in materials, we have 20,000 in labor, and we have 20,000 in um, overhead. So what we do is we take the 40,000 multiplied by $2.30, and we'll get a total here of $92,000. 92,000 for materials. Then 20,000 times 90 cents, we get $18,000 for our labor cost. And then 20,000 times the dollar 80 leaves us $36,000 for manufacturing overhead. So these three together, let's just do a subtotal of these, add to 146,000. So our work in process ending balance now is 146,000. To that, we add it to the 150, and if we're lucky, we'll get the 1196, and what do we get? 1996000. So these two numbers equal. Our cost reconciliation is perfectly fine. So let's review before we leave. We figured out our cost per equivalent unit. Then we had our total cost or our cost reconciliation section, and, we, and our costs needed to be accounted for as follows. Our units transferred were 370,000. They're 100% complete in terms of all three costs. So we can use whole cost times 370 to get the amount that was transferred. So now when we want to know how much was transferred out of work in process for this department into the next, 1,850,000. How much is left in work in process? Well, we take our equivalent units in terms of material, our equivalent units in terms of labor, our equivalent units in terms of overhead, and we all multiply them by their respective cost per equivalent unit within their cost category. We have a total value here, 146 for work in process at ending balance, which gives us this number. Now, uh, I made a small mistake here. Allow me to correct it. I said ending count. This is not ending count, but when we're down here, this is ending balance. I just got confused by, the, by putting the counts here. Ending balance, 92,000, 18,036. That shows much better as a problem than it does as, uh, as, as just a, a plain old lecture screen, doesn't it? I'll see you in the problems. Yeah.